Hello everyone, and welcome to my bold and beautiful channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Finn requests that Baker bring Sheila in for questioning. Brooke, Ridge and Hope sat in Eric's office, waiting for Steffi to respond. Hope claimed it felt like yesterday, as she watched Hollis prepare everything for Deacon and Sheila's wedding. Ridge claimed that Sheila killed those males. He didn't know how or why, but she did. Carter came, assuming they had heard. He stated that his contact at the police department had contacted him with information on Hollis' death, which was caused by an overdose. Hope stated that Hollis cared about himself and his health. Brooke inquired whether Hollis and Tom had done drugs together. Carter informed Brooke that he just knew what the report stated. He asked Hope how Deacon was doing, and she mentioned how important Tom and Hollis had been to Deacon. Rich considered it significant that Tom had saved Sheila's life. Brooke referred to it as a coincidence, but Rich did not believe in coincidences when it came to Sheila. Carter confirmed that he had thought the same thing. Hope inquired about Tom and Hollis. This is Sheila. Ridge yelled, claiming Sheila attempted to assassinate Steffi in order to get closer to Finn and Hayes. Ridge described Sheila as deranged. Hope remembered Hollis as Ridge answered a phone call. A montage of recollections of him appeared on the screen. Following the call, the group addressed how Hollis' drug use did not reflect his personality. Brooke assumed Deacon would have picked it up. Carter assumed that it supported their theory regarding Sheila. Ridge accused Carter of calling it what it was. Brooke questioned why Sheila wasn't in jail. Ridge still hadn't heard from Steffi. Carter wondered if she was all right. Ridge was certain she was in the hospital, getting to the bottom of the situation. In the morgue, Lee revealed to Steffi that Tom and Hollis had died from the same substance at the same level of toxicity. Steffi asserted that Sheila, a former medical professional who understood dosing, had done it. Lee agreed that it further implicated Sheila and stated she was on her way to face her. Steffi confirmed that she had been planning to do the same. Finn questioned whether confronting Sheila, who might be reverting to her old habits, was wise. Steffi inquired as they waited for Sheila to attack. Steffi decided to head over there, and Finn and Lee would join her. Steffi believed they could put pressure on Sheila to make a mistake, and she would not stop until Sheila spent the rest of her life in prison. At Deacon and Sheila's house, Deacon proceeded to panic out about Tom and Hollis. Sheila stated that she did not want Deacon's mind to be filled with murderous thoughts. Pushing open the front door, Chief Baker inquired whether anyone had mentioned murder. Baker was there with inquiries about the two killings at Deacon's establishment. Deacon indicated that the men had been more than simply employees. They had also been his buddies. Baker asked Deacon to recount the events preceding Tom's death. Deacon recalls Tom performing on stage and once having a song played on the radio. It had been a fantastic night until Tom fell. Sheila stated she had done everything she could as a former nurse, but Tom had died so fast. Baker expressed condolences for Deacon's loss, but stated that a case had been opened because a second employee had died. A case? Sheila asked. Baker explained that it needed to ensure that no foul play was engaged. Lee Steffi and Finn arrived and Steffi exclaimed, Aha! when she saw Baker. Sheila stated that they were collaborating with the police, and there was no need for all that. Baker offered to speak with them later, but Steffi insisted on hearing it straight away. She alerted Finn, who revealed that Hollis had died of an overdose. Sheila stared at Deacon who sneered, convinced there was no way because Hollis did not use. Baker was not surprised but Lee and Steffi went on to say that both guys had received the same medicine and had the same amount of toxicity. Steffi explained that two men had died and they knew why. Sheila scoffed, wondering why they were looking at her. Steffi revealed that Sheila had killed them. Sheila responded that it was a hazardous accusation, and the animal print wearing Steffi remarked that Sheila was a dangerous beast. Deacon felt it was enough and instructed Steffi to go. Steffi ignored Deacon and asked Baker when he would arrest the monster, who had shot Finn and Steffi and left Lee for dead on the side of the road. Lee stated that Tom and Hollis were the most recent victims. Deacon claimed it was ridiculous to blame Sheila. Sheila told everyone that she wasn't that person. She had changed. She was in therapy and married the love of her life. Sheila lived a clean and uncomplicated life. This woman. Lee began to speak, but Deacon interrupted her, 
determined that everyone would treat his wife with respect in his home. Deacon said that Ayel Jardino was their home, and Tom and Hollis were family. Sheila went on to say that Tom had helped save her, that Hollis had appreciated her rather than seeing her as a monster. She had cared for each of them. She claimed that she was not responsible for Tom or Hollis' deaths. Lee challenged Sheila to explain what had occurred. Sheila paused for a time before remembering that Hollis had been upset by the contents of Tom's rucksack. Lee swallowed hard as Sheila said that Hollis had believed it might get Tom killed, and then Hollis had also died. Sheila believed the clue was in the backpack and said they had to find it. Lee's gaze moved as she appeared to relax into thought. Steffi accused Sheila of lying about her convenient backpack. Baker encouraged Steffi to let him handle it and inquired about the backpack. Sheila recalled her talk with Hollis regarding the backpack. She apologized for being short with Hollis, but she was distraught by Tom's death. Sheila had no idea what was in the backpack and had urged Hollis to get rid of it. Baker questioned why Sheila would do it. Sheila added that Tom had been without relatives, and she was concerned that drugs might still be in the bag. You call the police, not throw it away. Baker responded. Lee disagreed. Not unless you want to get rid of some damning evidence. Sheila stated that she, too, was eager to discover what had occurred. She reasoned that the backpack must still exist and contain the answers. Lee frowned. Later, everyone searched the restaurant, with Steffi standing with her arms folded. Baker entered, claiming it was not in the stockroom. Or dumpster, Lee replied as he entered. Sheila whispered that it wasn't there and Lee and Steffi began to argue with Deacon about why Sheila would lie. Baker inquired whether Sheila had been with Deacon the entire night. Deacon said she'd arrived later that night. Sheila confirmed it, but denied that she was downstairs when Hollis was killed. Steffi told Baker to bring Sheila in for questioning because she felt unsafe. Lee teased Sheila, claiming it wasn't the first time it had happened there, and that there might be more. Sheila asked Finn to say something. She questioned if he believed her. He responded, I believe in second chances. He had no idea what had transpired, but he did know that disaster followed Sheila everywhere she went. Sheila rolled her eyes. Finn agreed with his wife and stated they would feel safer if Baker questioned Sheila. Baker agreed. Is Deacon Sharp the real reason for the I.L. Giardino murders? The bold and the beautiful summer mystery is in full swing, and Deacon Sharp Sean Cannon could be the key to solving the I.L. Giardino murders. Deacon was heartbroken when Tom Starr, Clint Howard, and Hollis died. But what if he is the true cause they have died and gone? Continue reading for all the details. Here's what's coming next on Bold and Beautiful. Spoilers ahead. The I.L. Giardino killings have set a chain of events in motion, and Deacon Sharp appears to be paying the price. Tom Starr died in the midst of a complex paternity test issue. But could it all be a coincidence? B&B watchers assume Tom and Hollis' deaths were tied to Luna Nozawa's Lisa Yada paternity test, although this may not be the case at all. The bold and the beautiful spoilers. Deacon Sharp loses everything. At the end of the day, Deacon Sharp is the one most affected by the I.L. Giardino deaths. He lost not only two of his most valuable employees, but also two of his closest friends. He won't have time to mourn since the LAPD will close his restaurant until they find the killer and he'll be short on cash shortly. As if losing his friends and livelihood weren't enough, Deacon will learn this week on Bold and the Beautiful that he is also in danger of losing his wife. Sheila Carter, Kimberlyn Brown, will soon be in an interrogation room with Detective Baker, facing double murder charges.